Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today I have another graveyard deck. I've shared a couple graveyard decks. Actually, this is the second one I've shared in the last week, so I kind of apologize to you guys. But at the same time, I saw this deck in top 100 gameplay over above 6150 trophies, and I noticed it was free-to-play friendly. I'm always trying to look out for you guys, the free-to-play players, because I know that's the majority of my audience. And this deck works wonders, and what really caught my eye is that it has has Skeleton Army, which is a really cool card and oftentimes undervalued. I'm here joined by Dark Prince. Let's go into a live match right now. Look at, he's playing against Sana, dude, who's actually a Finnish pro player. I've had him on the channel a couple times before, and of course, he's playing a Golem deck. So, man, we're just going to start with a, a live match right out the gate here, guys. And it looks like Dark Prince is going to absolutely put a ton of pressure here in the opposite lane as soon as Sana drew, uh, drops that Golem. But he's going to have a hard time. It's probably going to be a tower trade here. He's going to have a hard time defending. Let's see what happens. A Skarmy on the Golem going to take like two-thirds HP. Make that all the HP away from that Golem and kill the Golem. But does he have... What else does he have? It looks like he's going to go ahead and sacrifice that tower. Even though I thought he had Fireball in hand. Maybe he used it in the previous sequence and I missed it. Either way, let's see how he plays this here. He's going to wait for the opponent here, Sana, to pump up. And it looks like he's just going to save all his elixir to go in for an aggressive Graveyard in Giant. Here it is. Graveyard, Giant in the pocket. And boom, Lumberjack in the pocket as well. Lumberjack is so strong, man. Look how fast that Lumberjack can chop down that Giant. But not before Dark Prince takes down that pump and does a decent amount of damage to the right tower there. But we're only about halfway through this match, guys. It could be anybody's game, but remember that Sana Dude definitely has the advantage as we get into double elixir time. And there it goes, the big golem drop behind his king tower, knowing that he does have a little bit of an elixir lead here. Actually, make it a lot of bit of an elixir lead. It's going to be trouble here for Dark Prince. Dark Prince, I talked to him before the video, by the way, and he said he has no problem doing a live match and uh, showing losses. So win or loss, we're going to share this replay for you, with you guys uh, either way. And here it comes, another Skarmy down. A uh, good answer by Sana Dude. With the baby dragon there. Now it's a baby dragon night witch in tow behind that golem. And we have a lumberjack and a mega minion. This is going to be really, really tough here to defend against, guys. I don't even know if he can pull this off. It looks like he's probably going to get three crowned here, guys. He does have fireball. I think there's the fireball. And wow, okay. I thought he was going to lose the tower there. That looked really, really, really tricky to defend. 1,000 HP left on his king tower. Things are not looking so good. And you'll notice his Sana dude being a very good player. He starts out with the night witch first and then places the golem and of course dp gives him the well played this is going to be really tricky here he's not going to be okay here he is he is going to go in with the golem and graveyard i wasn't sure if he was going to there but he kind of has to it's going to be a base race guys a skarmy in the pocket a giant on the tower 400 hp the goal oh the tower is down but there's going to be trouble here guys he's going to get three crowned he's going to get three crowned here no oh, man look at that guys no time left on the clock. Good game, man. I thought Sana Dude had him there on the three crown. And of course he would have had he only had like literally one or two more seconds left in the match. Guys, in today's video, by the way, welcome, welcome to the channel. I felt like we just hopped right into that replay there. I have a lot of replays to share with you guys. Uh, this is next video's uh, replays. Let's watch one against Pompeo playing this deck. Pompeo still going with his OG favorite deck. I'm really bummed. Out. I had a bunch of Pompeo replays to share with you guys for another Pompeo video, and then the maintenance break hit uh, yesterday, so I lost all the replays, but hopefully we'll have him back on the channel again. This time, we'll see Pompeo actually as the opponent here, focusing on Dark Prince's deck. Now, again, I had the opportunity to talk to Dark Prince a little bit about the deck, and I want to share some strategy tips and advice, as we like to do here in CWA with you guys. And one thing about this deck that you'll say, that the first thing that Dark Prince told me about this deck that is a little bit different than normal giant decks is that he will always start out matches with a giant in the back of the king tower as the first play that's a very unorthodox move where you're going to see some serious power pushes like the one that you just saw there against pompeo uh just taking the tower on the very first push now the thing that dark prince likes to do here and you're going to see he's able to defend really easily too just a uh, fireball with a knockback against the balloon now very easy in the mega minion and just like 
like that only one minute into this match. He's already pretty much secured the victory as long as he defends and plays this appropriately. Now back to the Giant as a starting play. Again, guys, it's unorthodox. We always preach never to do that. But Dark Prince, I'm actually going to go ahead and flash his uh, text guide to this deck right now on the overlay. His his ling English is not his first language, so bear with the, uh, the grammatical errors or whatever. But it's really, really good advice, guys. So you might want to go ahead and just pause and screenshot or read this uh, all off. But essentially, he says the reason he likes putting down that giant in the back as a starting play is, one, because, frankly, the meta right now, there's not a lot of expo. It's a pretty bad spot for expo right now, and that's a big reason why you wouldn't play your giant in the back. And then, uh, other than that, you're able to really lean on the defenses of this deck and the zap bait of this deck to defend in the opposite lane, uh, bait out the opponent's zap spell, and then pressure heavy in the giant lane, hopefully for a big positive elixir advantage on your part, and hopefully taking their tower. So if you can lightly defend against your punish lane, where they're trying to punish you after you drop the giant, which is nine times out of ten going to be the case, you can bait out their zap and hit him with a big graveyard push. Another thing you're going to notice here as he secures the three crown victory against Pomp is, uh, and he didn't play, we didn't do play by play in this match because honestly, guys, he pretty much had it won on that first big monster monster push against Pompeo, and don't worry, we will show you a Lava Loon replay as well. Another thing you're going to see DP do here, let's watch, uh, hmm, do we want to watch this one? Uh, no, let's watch this one against XC NATO, Hog XC NATO, because, uh, he has the Valkyrie as well for the Graveyard, it's a tough matchup, and the NATO to activate the King Tower on the Graveyard, which you can do, guys. I see some people, one, here and there in the comments saying you can't activate, uh, with NATO anymore on Graveyard. You certainly can, uh, and it's not even that tricky to do so. You just make sure that you have the, uh, the NATO Vortex or whatever placed, uh, directly on the edge of that King Tower, and it will activate, uh, most of the time, depending on the RNG factor of the Skeleton Spawned. Now, here we go, guys. This is a really big push, and there it is. That's the King Tower activation. This is a really big push coming in, but look at the Zap right here. He's gonna kill and finish off those Goblins, and just get a ton of damage with that giant despite that executioner eventually the executioner dies to the skeletons and despite the king tower activation we take that tower down to 1157 hp not a bad push at all there so the thing about this deck right is that you have the Skarmy, which is, is, is just great in this deck. And it's especially great when you already have a tower down. You can absolutely catch your opponent off guard, incredibly off guard, especially in double elixir. Dropping the giant, or dropping the graveyard, pause for one elixir. Drop the giant in the pocket, pause for one elixir, and drop the Skarmy. Good luck defending that. Also, you can use the bats. I was actually uh, co-hosting a stream with Simple, uh, the pro from Kranis Esports. He's going to come back on the channel, by the way, soon. And he said that, in his opinion, Bats were one of the best cards in the entire game. Certainly the best support card, just because of the sheer amount of DPS they can put out for only two Elixir. Really, really strong card. And you can use that to your advantage. Defending with Bats or using the Bats with the Giant as Zap Bait and then punishing with the Skarmy. So the synergy between Bats... Graveyard and Skarmy is just awesome and it really works well in this deck. Again, another thing you'll notice on Dark Prince here, guys, is he plays his archers in the same lane oftentimes rather than splitting them. That's to bait out the opponent's spell and them to try to pressure them uh, after the fact, especially if they have poison. That's what, what you guys are going to want to do. But right now, luckily for graveyard users, and that's why we happen to be sharing a lot of graveyard decks here on the channel, is that Poison's not so popular anymore. Not as popular as it was the previous meta, at least. And that kind of opens up a new opportunity to shine for graveyard users. Now, check out Dark Prince here. He's going to go ahead and play some uh, bats. Again, bats OP in the right lane. Of course, unfortunately, he takes that la that last hit on the Hog Rider and loses that tower. But still, look at the Elixir advantage right now. And look at him go all in here on this giant push. Despite the Valkyrie, he's going to play the giant in the pocket. He has that graveyard fireball coming down. That's going to take care of the Executioner almost. And look at that. It didn't look like that was a beautiful push there. But still, with that mega minion swing we get the left tower down to 99 hp not 
too shabby, guys. You guys are going to really like this deck, I think. And it's a deck that will perform uh, even against, like, over-level Lily Barbarians. And it's good for free-to-play players because the only epic card in the deck is Skarmy. Which, uh, if we kind of harken back to my top ten cards where level doesn't matter all that much, uh, Skarmy was one of the cards on the list because Skarmy is effective oftentimes even if a little bit lagging behind in level. And the only legendary is obviously the win condition. You can't have a free-to-play friendly uh, graveyard deck without, of course, having graveyard in it. So I can't do much about that for you guys. But anyway, guys, a CWA video is not complete uh, without a verse Lava Hound uh, matchup because you guys know. You guys know what I'm going to say. Everybody in the comments. But Ash, what about Lava Loon? Lava Loon wrecks this deck. Well, let's go ahead and see how you handle a Lava Loon matchup playing this uh, graveyard deck here. So we're going to start out with a giant...